British DJs. An American voiceover. It's the Harley and Just Show. <laughs> that was better when we were off air, you when you did the ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I don't. We, there was a controversial opinion we both just had there. Listening yeah. in to while my guitar literally weeps from some anniversary thing. Can't remember when it was, but I'm, I'm listening into the playing. And I'm like off without looking at it. You're thinking that's not that great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not that great. There's some of the stuff the Prince is doing, and you're like, yeah, that's incredible. But then you sit there going, cracky. You know, it's like, well, he's a living legend. It's like, well, if you actually use well, your ears, you do know, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, that was great. That was good. Um, no, it's just, it's the thing when you use your ears. Sometimes people use their eyes when they listen to music too much. And it's just, it is an audible experience. It is, yeah. It's not about how someone looks some of the time. If, you, if it doesn't sound good, what's the point? It does add something as well, though, like be watching a performance Definitely, and yeah. um, listening to it and can add a certain level. Mm. Um which we can talk about if we talk about what I've done this weekend. Oh, should we, should we, should we just dive straight in? Yeah, hi everybody. By oh, the way, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. yeah, this hi. is the Harley and Josh show. How are you, Harley? I am good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, boy. Good, good, good. Can we talk about me now? No. <sighs> Let's talk about you. Let's talk about me. Yeah. Right, because I, I'm still in awe of this weekend uh-huh. because I've had such a good weekend of watching and playing music. Nice. Um. Because this Friday, me and David Brown, we went... Do you want to do a post of thingy? We'll probably tell people that we're uh, on there. Uh, I do so. <laughs> Whilst you're yawning. Okay. Um, yeah, me and David, we uh, went to South End, um, sunny South End, yeah. uh, to Chinneries. Have you ever been to Chinneries? No, I have not. We're posing for a picture. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so if you see a picture, that 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 just ha- that's what just happened just then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we uh, yeah, we went to Chinneries in South End to see the awesome Jamie Lenman. Yeah, boy. And it was oh, I I can't can't get over how good it was. We turned up. We thought we were going to miss Lower Lower, who were opening the night, and we we're so happy we didn't because their nice. set was really good, yeah, yeah. really tight, real kind of angsty. Did you get to the, hang out with them? We got to hang out with Jack and the guys a little bit afterwards. Sweet. Yeah, so uh, they they came out and watched the show with us. Nice. Um, they, it was really kind of techy in places and just a real tight set. Uh, apparently, our night was one of the quietest of the tour. Uh, they were on day nine of ten, um, but every every show had been pretty much packed out apart nice. from this one, um, which was a little bit of a shame because we couldn't see the full energy. But they, I mean, they still every band put on a full performance. Uh, after that, we saw uh, Gender Roles, which oh, were the okay. second support band, who were they were right. I is it basically just rolling. Different genders down the hill. Yeah, no, 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 no. They had genders in a sandwich. Ah, good. Like in a in, good. a in a subway for. I'm glad. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. um, they were right. Uh, not wasn't as into their kind of music um, as I was the other the other two bands. Um, but I noticed a weird thing when they were packing down the support bands stuff. Um, yeah. To uh, get the. The headline band up. Uh huh. That the support band's drum kit didn't leave the stage. Right. Um, what sort of day supply the kit? You think? Well, as what happened come the live show. Well, first of all, only two people walked on stage. Right. Uh, Jamie Lemon and the drummer Dan. Right. Um, and he did the whole set as a two piece. And it was the biggest sound of all time. What? So Jamie Lenman yeah. was a two-piece? Yeah. Him and the drummer, he had... Have you seen these submarine pickups? No. They are... Basically, they're... Um, I'm going to get nerdy here. Off we go. So there's a... Like, it's called a submarine because it looks a bit like a submarine, like a lipstick kind of pickup, but only goes... It goes... You fit it onto your guitar and it only goes under the first two strings or the three strings i think it's the first two the e and the a right and he had that out coming out into a pog two cool. down an octave into a bass amp Mental. and he was playing full-on like classic ruben songs that were sounding massive and they sounded like a full three-piece band because cool. damn the both the drummer and he was singing so you had the two-part harmonies 
but then you had the bass, you had the guitar, and he could still play all the guitar riffs that as he wanted to with the high parts and the lead parts, mm. and the bass was still there. And it was such a full set. It's it was crazy. so massive. Um, it's a two-piece, man. It's, it's, it's way more popular nowadays. Yeah, and I... I I mean, we got bands. I mean, White Stripes, who who did it in their own way. Mm-hmm. Um, Royal Blood, the most important important ones, Druids. Druids as well. Yeah. Royal Blood were the sort of the first band to sort of get a full sound out of it. Mm-hmm. But bear in mind, I've seen seen Royal Blood live, and I still think. I mean, Jamie Lemon's show was a bigger, fatter, more classic sound. It was a fantastic band. I saw first first two-piece band I saw live were called Buffalo Inc. And they were from East London. And was it 93 feet east? Just to sort of like one of those days, it was a it was a week night. I was just out and there was a band playing and they were just incredible. Like st- I think they're still going, but if not, their stuff is still, still on Bandcamp. Buffalo Inc. It's a girl and boy. I'm not sure if they're brother and sister, but mm. girl on drums, boy on uh, guitar and effects yeah. <laughs> and vocals. And uh, they had a sound that I'd never heard before. I haven't really heard since. It's not just one of those classic like, oh, there's two of them, but they make huge riffs. Ghosts of Men do that really, really well. Yeah. But there is just, there is a lot of big riffs for two bands. They had this radio heady kind of sound about them where it was still filling those different sonic niches. Mm. You know, it's not just the heavy um, but the two of them, and it was it was great. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to, I'm going to have to revisit my Buffalo Ink collection. Actually, play some next week. Man. Yeah, that yeah, would be a good idea. Um, so yeah, that was my Friday night, and that was just, it. Blew me away with just just the sad stuff they did. They played some new Lemon stuff. They played some old Ruben tracks. They played four or five tracks, um, and it made me laugh because Jack. Uh, there was one song that they did off the Muscle Memory album, and really heavy tunes. Nice and. Uh, Jack turned to me just before this song starts. He's like, I've seen this set nine times already <laughs> and I'm not tired. Yeah, this. you're not annoyed at it yet. Yeah, and lovely. he was, I mean, it was a ref, like a great show and it was really cool to see how into it the band were as well. They were all loving it, you know, Sweet. this late in the tour. So, um, yeah, and nice. That, that, it, it was just a really cool show. I bought a couple of t-shirts. I bought a Loa Loa t-shirt. I bought a Jamie Lemon t-shirt. I really wanted... They had the Ruben um, in Nothing We Trust uh, re- vinyls for cool. sale. And I really wanted to get it. I don't have a vinyl player. But like the artwork, to see it in full size, I was like, should I? Yeah, can and I, I just... And I, I, oh, can, I, can I afford it? Yeah. But I, I, I couldn't quite justify it. Yeah, yeah, no. um David loved the show as well. He was he was absolutely loving it. Um, and we got very much inspired by it. And uh, it's kind of... It's, it's, yeah, I love those shows where you come away from it. You're just like, I've got to do something. I've just got to do something. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Like, yeah. it just makes you want to do something. Because it's, it's been inspirational. It makes you It makes you either want to put on a show makes you want to write a song. It makes you just want to go to another one of their shows. It's just, it, it's a call to action after the yeah, show. it is, yeah. And it could be anything. It could be any one thing at the gig that makes you do it. It could be one show, one song where you just use a chord sequence or a guitar tone or a, just a, an effect on his voice uh, or, he, or her voice. Mm. And, and you'll just be like, wow I've, I've got to do something like yeah. that yeah yeah or you've just got to tell somebody about it it's, it's a call to action and that that's kind of what we strive for it's just to get that at least out of one or two audience members when we play and that's then we've it. done our job you know and I, he he controlled bear in mind it was just him at the front of the stage he controlled that crowd so well mm. uh, anyone who's seen any of uh lemon shows or any ruben shows he's got a real dominance on stage um, mm-hmm. he can say whatever he likes in a, and, and be very sure of what he's saying and it um, transfers to the audience really well. Yeah. Um, and at one end of one of the songs, it ends up with like a 6-8. Cool. He chucked his guitar on the floor and went behind the support band's drum kit and they did a dual drum bit, drum nice. section bit. Nice. Then Lenman carried it up on drums. Right, I, yeah. The drummer got up, picked his guitar up, and they did a set. They did two songs the other way around. That's pretty cool. It was so good. It was really cool. Um, Again, it just it it makes you appreciate somebody's uh, musicianship more when you see them changing instruments, especially mid set. Yeah, 
That's right. it. I mean, there were... Because there were... you know how many leads you could trip up on the way? Exactly. <laughs> how many times? Yeah. I've done that. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and just put the guitar down and just play on vocals and use some more harmonica and... Yeah. And you're on the floor. And everyone's like, oh, it's a slapstick show. Jack, he laughed because he was like, oh, the one gig you came to was the one where everything went wrong. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, a cymbal fell off, a mic fell off, and I <laughs> nearly dropped a stick. And I was like, that's... <laughs> That's most gigs. Yeah, for yeah. Me, that's and like, I don't even have a drumstick. Yeah, if it's not even, if it's not, what will you do now? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yay! A drumstick is right there. <laughs> it's funny that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think if, if you want a perfect show, uh, you're going to be wanting for a long time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. No. Nothing ever goes completely to plan. Exactly. It's and I, I'd say one of my favourite things um, when I went to see. Oh, who's that band? The techie, metal proggy band, Dream Theater. Right. Um, I'm not a big Dream Theater fan, but uh, a friend of mine went, you have to go see their show because it's an incredible show. Mm. The way it's done, the lighting's good, the sound is always perfect, and it was it was a great set. Sweet. But my favorite part was there was a point, Mike Mangini on drums, who's all arms and smiles and weird faces and stuff, and I noticed he just suddenly stopped performing for a bit. He was still playing everything, note for note. Yeah, yeah. Turned over to Rudez on drums. No, on keys. Looked at him. Rudez kind of looked at him. And at the end of the bar, he nodded him into the next section. Yeah. And Mangini went, oh, yeah. And sort of looked up at it and went, you know, gave him a thumbs up and sort of yeah. thing. Thanks, mate. And carried on. And I was like, I love that. The communication yeah. between the band is what yeah. makes it for me. Is yeah, that yeah. is that that conversation do you reckon his uh, his in ears went down then or something I, I I think he just forgot where he was or, oh, yeah, or yeah. weren't sure when the next section comes in yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of thing so, um, but still playing in, in seven yeah because they, they never, <laughs> never they never played a backing track over tracks. four you know yeah, yeah. Um, Dream Theater bear, bear in mind how much they've got going on they don't ever play never a track never backing tracks that's pretty Which crazy is, uh, I don't even well, that's, that's their jazz to... training coming in there isn't it <laughs> yeah that's it they they they're... but you, 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 you teased us there because you said that you'd played something where did you play Harley I I did play this weekend. Where did you play? Uh, good question. I at, ah, I said I played this weekend at the Belstead Brook Hotel. Oh, nice place. I with the mementos. Yeah. Uh, it's a lovely place. We have yeah. our own stage. The sound's really dead in there. So. Really, did you go to walk around the grounds? Uh, we didn't know. No, we, that's um, nice. Murray and I did that um, uh, with Rich um, when we were just wandering around because it's just lots of really nice old trees and a nice little actual brook because there is a brook. <laughs> it's a Belstead oh, yes. Brook. Anyway, so. Is it a Belstead Brook? Yeah, I think it's a brook in Belstead. Oh, okay. But it ain't brook. It's still working. <laughs> Sorry. That sounds like something they would say, though. It ain't brook, you need evil. Um, but, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, okay, cool. So, I, I, was, I was playing with the mementos. Uh, hey, we, what are you new? Uh, no, it was actually for... I thought it was for a wedding. It wasn't. It was for a Freemason's ball. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're supposed <laughs> to be inducted? saying this. Uh, yeah, no, um... I, was, could, I could see you have a little red briefcase and just like wander around town in the dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know the secret wiggly I, handshake? Well, I have brought my brief, briefcase with me. Uh, yeah, 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 briefcase, and, W word. Yes. Yeah, I can't say on the radio. <laughs> right, well, so was this, uh, was this uh, somebody in the band booked it? Was it, uh, it was website? inquiry. Uh, it turns out quite a few of the members had seen us at various shows. One had seen us at a function in Gresham's. One had oh, seen cool. us um, at an open day... Uh, somewhere else I can't think where that was uh, but we um, they'd sort of seen us around and been impressed with what we do yeah. and liked what we bring it sounds really sinister right now the Freemasons have it, been watching your progress that's it that's great, it they're everywhere um, great surprisingly normal people Chagrin. they're just they're just guys and get ladies although it's generally a male, male thing this is was a for a um, celebration of women uh, so yeah. one one meeting a year they meet up uh, they bring their respective partners along. When I, when I hear about secret societies, I think appreciation of women is just an orgy. It's just a bunch of people going in there with different car keys. Unfortunately, they uh, didn't. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, for for oh, unfortunately, <laughs> they um, we weren't invited to that bit. Ah, oh, you weren't so, um, good to They all left whilst we were packing down. Uh, obviously, we had our first gig with our new keys player. Don nice. Lewis. Yeah, um, yeah, you've been raving about him. Yeah, we we did one rehearsal with him, and we we met we. We're able to get to the hall early. We got there about half three, mm -hmm. uh, set up, make sure everything was working. We got a really good sound out of it. Um, really nice, level, controlled sound, but really powerful as well. Sweet. Uh, and it's off your Behringer. With the Behringer, the mm. XR18. 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 Um, and um, we, yeah, we went through some stuff. 
uh, and the gig went even better than what it had have it done. Went through some staff. Went through some staff. Yeah, like punch holes in them. No, <laughs> just um, like gunning them down. <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, rehearsed some of the tracks that we hadn't had a chance to go through um, in our previous rehearsal. Uh, they went really well, and it came to the gig, and we played even better. I mean, it was really good. The sound was great. There was a real uh, nice vibe. There were people on the floor for the whole gig, which was awesome. That's what we like. Um, and, yeah, it was great. And at the end of the song, they went Any in. Any cards go out? Uh, I believe there were some that nice. went out, I think. Nice. Um, I've been lax with that. I haven't been putting cards in my, my wallet. I so ran people out are sitting of there cards. going like, you got any cards? I'm like, yes, but not here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just one thing I'm just going to have to just constantly remember. I, I need to get remember. some cards made. Yeah, I, yeah. I ran out of cards and I haven't bought new ones. So maybe Where do you I'll... get your cards done? Um, I had them, uh, Lucy Sampson designed some cards for me. Oh, bless her. Uh, multi-talented one, isn't she? She's very much. Check out Honey and the Bear if you haven't so of far. Of course, or Lucy Sampson, uh, also on yeah, Spotify. Is, yeah, it's exactly what um, you've played on. Yeah, that's You're why saying, I'm pushing yeah, that so one cards, more. Sorry, you were saying. Um, yeah, she designed me some cards, uh, and I haven't, and I, although she designed them, I found that I had them printed via Vistaprint. Um, yeah, yeah. See, I did the same. I designed... The, the layout for the cards and everything like this, but I just ended over to, to Vistaprint. I really wanted to go local with the business because I, I, yeah. I try to make sure that I get to, I use lots of local printing companies and stuff like this, uh, Ipswich Printing, which is opposite Taran Parts. It's a good place to go. Okay. But at the time when I printed them out, I was very strapped for cash. So <laughs> Vistaprint was pretty good for that, apart from the, the postage, which took about like three years or whatever. Yeah. Uh, speaking of design, um, one band that I think uh, have got quite a nice memorable design around here. Um, I saw, uh, I, I, again, I always recognise it whenever I see it. Uh, Josh Carr from Hot Tramp had it had it on his jacket. It right. was a striped sun badge. Uh, and yeah. they've got this lovely kind of like Japanese-y, cartoony Sergeant Pepper's uh, um, like yellow submarine style waves yeah if you, think, if you if you try and smash all the what i just said there into one thing i'm struggling you might be it's just, just waves that were cartoony right cartoon but waves with their with their logo on and if you don't mind harley i'd like to play people their one of their songs oh please do please do they have uh well we they've just basically alluded this for a little while i've wanted to play them on the show but then we've run out of time or i haven't been able to download the song so uh i'm very happy with this one this one is called ghosts by strike the sun i hope you enjoy it guys nice bit of tension there at the end of strike the sun nice. with ghosts um that's available on Bandcamp. uh I, I missed their set unfortunately when i saw them when they played with the thinking men and ghosts of men which i raved about on last week's show if you haven't checked that out yet uh, that is gonna be available on our youtube and our podbean and our itunes um where we talk all different types of things like uh, about ghosts of men and thinking men if you like their music you will enjoy that show um but yeah i've i've, I've yet to see struck this on live right uh, uh, but well. so but they are playing this week are which they i will be talking about later on in the show so if anybody here would like to see that live what you just heard stick around to the end of the show and we'll let you know where they're going to be playing they have to listen to all the rest of the <laughs> podcast ah <laughs> all the nonsense all the nonsenseness that we become talking <laughs> exactly about yeah. that that itself talking about nonsense was nonsense <laughs> It is. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go talk about, my, talk about myself now, right? Because you're talking about yourself. I mean, that's... Uh, so I'm going to talk about myself. So I guess. I guess. guess. I guess. Yeah. I Equal time, please, can we? Uh, uh, <laughs> fine. Uh, fine. So, yeah, uh, I had a nice, uh, nice little weekend myself. I got to, um, I got to see Impilo play, which if anybody's seen the show before... Then uh, you may never have heard of Impilo, <laughs> seen this show, heard this show. Yeah, um, they got to play, they were playing at the Golf Hotel uh, on Foxhall Road. Really fun show. Um, like I say, I played there on Christmas Eve. Followers of the show will know that. Um, and it was a completely different vibe because they took out the seats. We had my full PA rig in there with the subs in a ray. So it was wow. just, <laughs> you know, crossovers properly working. Sweet. And uh, yeah, and with everything mic'd up. Uh, we didn't have the snare mic'd up. We just we got one of Murray's um, pencil mics just pointing at the snare yeah. from overhead um, and that picked pick up, up the, the whole kit. Hi hat as well, yeah. Right. I started to feed back a little bit during the show, so I just to find a little bit of the weird frequency that it was it was finding. But yeah, yeah that worked really well. Um, it was 
a good crowd as well. Like, you know, cause, uh, have you been to the golf? Uh, yes, yeah, I've played yeah. there a couple of times with Space Rocks back nice. in the day. Have you been there since it's been revamped? I have, yes. Yeah, yeah. I popped in recently because I, I, I tried to get a geek there um, yeah, nice. a little while ago. Yeah, cool. um, I think Chart Attack were actually asked to play that night originally. Oh, sweet. Uh, but um, I was uh, out. I already made plans to uh, go Sorry. see Jamie Lemon. So, um, there we go. Uh, we, we turned we go. it down. Well, it's nice. Well, it's uh, well, better for a beer. So, exactly. ended up. Uh, being able to uh, because they've taken the the sort of wall bits out on the sort of the cu- the sort of dancing cube they have mm-hmm. um, that sounds pretty futuristic to anybody listening in but you know it's 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 it's, it's a dancing it's kind of futuristic um, but yeah like uh, because of that it opened the pub up so much more when they when they renovated yeah. it so uh, yeah so people at the at the bar can see what's going on with the band quite easily they can still enjoy it down there so I was out there carding them <laughs> yeah because <laughs> like, you know we had some sort of business cards sort of lying around so i'm just like you look like you're enjoying this here's a card <laughs> nice uh, that kind of thing so i'm wheeling and dealing um it's not but yeah so it's a good it's a good place for that actually were they in pilo cards or were they in pilo cards yeah awesome okay. yeah no, <laughs> uh, uh, but oh, you seem to be enjoying this let's try something completely different <laughs> <laughs> yeah be interesting to see how uh how many inquiries they get from that because if there's like there may be a real advantage for having Whilst the band is playing, somebody else going. If you're liking this, have a flyer. Yeah, it's the same have with the merch guys. I mean, yeah. you know, if we if you can afford merch guys, or if you just have friends that are just lovely enough to come to you, come to every single gig for you know for you to sort their transport and beer out, then that is just a perfect thing to have. Because I mean, I know the the problems of that too too well because I am manager, booker, promoter, all this sort of stuff in the band, but. So the job of that person, if they're at the show, is to be out and smooching, taking names, yep. and you know, it's in there trying to see, get some more gigs, sell some albums, sell some t-shirts, that kind of stuff. But I can only ever do that before, in the break, and after the show. Which, uh, so, and I'm usually knackered at those points. I'm like, hi, oh, yeah, I'll come and talk to you for a minute. Let me just throw up first. <laughs> would you ever consider um, getting uh, hiring somebody else to either? do the the managing or the like you say the, the 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 crowd relations point of part of it not with the lockabillies no no not with the lockabillies um or, or how or my own how successful stuff, would you need to be before you could yeah i mean justify I, that i love the lockabillies uh but to point to a point i don't see it getting to the uh, getting to crazy levels where i can't manage it you know what i mean yeah we're, we're a nice humble band that likes to go out and play for people in our community or around to different festivals uh, yeah. or uh, or charity things where we know that we can just bring some energy you know but when it comes to trying to get make make the big bucks make them big time make the big bucks um there's only so much like cover band can do that's why we're releasing an album is so that we can kind of push to that next point yeah. which will be coming out soon ladies and gentlemen um but uh i'm hoping my solo stuff will be that and that's where i put po- that point the point where i'd go okay somebody else has to help me out on this because uh i can run sort of two bands yeah and also the pr and the and, and the and the pub, you know and the management and the uh, and the bookings for two things. So that's when I do it. But only then and only then I would do it if I could pay somebody properly. Yeah, that's my it's my main thing is because I I expect to be paid properly for my gigs for my work. And if I'm not expecting the same thing of myself to other people who are professionals, then I'm a hypocrite, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's... So I don't know. It's going to take a little while before I before I let the baby go. Uh, <laughs> it's going to yeah. take a long while but you know uh, I'm, agencies that kind of stuff if you know one doesn't one comes to me that isn't useless then I will relinquish some some of my stuff but yeah nice but, yeah. Don't so anyway uh, I would just I will always do that for Impilo though I will always go out and, and give cards because out because you're not playing yeah I'm not playing so I'm around I was doing the PA but I guess you know, you've got to walk around fine. the room to see how it sounds outside anyway yeah. so you might as well go yes it sounds right oh here's a guy yes. to my left yes when I'm South African as well. From, <laughs> Here's a guy to right, my mate. left. You might notice in South Africa, the left is the right. <laughs> and in Pila actually means life in Swahili. So you might actually understand this if you are from South Africa. There oh, we go. Nice to meet you. International. <laughs> Someone said we were said, said our reference was too local. Well, we've shown them. <laughs> <laughs> He's off ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Right. Uh, yeah. So that was a lovely, lovely chronic. <laughs> 
Korg. Uh, prawns. And prawns. And prawns. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we had a really good time. That was a really nice nice gig. Um, Angel got up of Beats, Rhymes and Grime, who nice. uh, we are looking at her name oh, yeah. on, on IRA Radio. She has a show on IRA Radio. Check her out. Um, yeah. She came up and did some incredible stuff, spoken word stuff and the also the track that her and Gav wrote um, for her own solo stuff, but in Pilo play it as a backing band for her sometimes. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, well done to those guys. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to play some in Pilo this week. Oh my God. Wow, this is the first time in ever week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, anyway, uh, then the 24th was Copas. I won't play it. I'm saying it for you. I didn't actually ask. I didn't actually ask. You didn't ask? What I didn't I... ask. <gasps> I didn't ask. I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm mixing the two of them. I'm going to be Copas one second, Copas another time. I'm never going to say Coppers. That's no, stupid. Copas. It's Copas. Yeah, that sounds more Greek But it's gr- closer Greek than Copas. Copas. Well, well, come on. You see C-O, single P. Single P. It's not English. C-O-P-A-S. And, you, and you've heard Barry Manilow. Yeah, but that's Copa. Yeah. Copa Cabana. I think he was saying it wrong. I think, I think it's the Copa Cabana. The Copa Cabana, yeah. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the Copa Cabana. See, Screw you, Barry Manilow. You messed up a lot of people's language. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so uh, I got to play a Copa Pass um, on Saturday night, which was really fun because that Friday night that I was with Impilo, I got all the masters back from George Cox <gasps> for the album, and I'm I could not be happier. Um, he's did he's done a very very what's wrong? What are we looking? I'm just seeing if there's anything on there for the playlist today. All right, yeah. Um, so no, there was uh, there's nothing there yet. I will I will do you guys a uh, a, oh. a little a little uh, a, a sweet little little uh, preview when I know the release date. Pardon me. Um, but yeah, so. What I did on Saturday, which was nice because I knew that a lot of my close friends were coming and some people that have been excited to Ooh. listen to the album. But usually when I play solo, uh, because there's not, there's not usually as many fans of the Lockerbillies coming down, it sort of filters out the herd to the sort of the diehard, uh, either diehard fans or my close, close friends. Mm. And uh, so I thought, right, okay, so those people need to hear what we've been what I haven't shut up about for like two months. Of course, yeah. So, so I, just, I brought my, well... Half of my PA down has brought the, the EV tops up because they've got quite a good bass response to them. So yeah, they're all right. they're not, they're and all right. uh, and played the tracks to them, went the whole the album the whole way through before you know before my first set and uh, in the break for my second set. And but the thing is, with my first set, I usually so uh, if anybody's seen this live, usually before what we'll do, it, usually what we we do is is an hour, then a break, and then another hour. Um, yeah. but I I. I when I'm solo, I don't have to worry about that so much because I don't have to worry about other people flagging in the band, getting getting either tired or getting sloppy or or if they just look like they um, are bored. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be like, right, okay, time to have a break. Um, but so with myself, I'm like, okay, well, people are enjoying it. If I stop right now, they're going to lose interest and they'll stop buying drinks, which is what I'm for, really. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I ended up playing. That was one of the longest sets I ever played. I did an hour and three quarters just straight through and then did another hour another half an hour afterwards mm. um uh, not for any particular reason i was just like oh screw it i'm off and yeah. i'm enjoying myself and there were people dancing to myself uh solo which is lovely nice um but i was playing on my gretch because that and the gretch is the it's me, me gretch rancher which has a nice little fidelitron humbucker pickup on it yeah and uh and my bigsby on it it's really quite good for being percussive Okay, yeah. At first, I wasn't sure about it because it uses a humbucking pickup instead of a usual sort of transducer pickup yeah. that, that acoustics have. So you get a completely different sound. It's quite bluesy. You can use, you can do slide playing quite nicely on it. Mm. But as it's mahogany, it's got this nice resonance to it. I usually use electric strings on it, but this time I've used phosphor bronze, the diarios on it, 13s. Okay, cool. And which is quite strange the difference that you get yeah I've, I, I rarely ever put steel strings on an acoustic and then bronze ones afterwards to check the tone mm. um but it, it is much louder just yeah. bronze strings are so much louder yeah uh, they just don't last as long um for me anyway i just go straight through them. yeah um but yeah uh, so that was quite nice to have that I'm, I'm starting to i'm starting to like the sound of that one a bit more now a bit I'm more st- acoustic yeah i still might i still might ask you to put a nice pickup in there Okay, and obviously pay you, um, but like we can the, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Because it's just the uh, I, I think it just needs to get some of that 
sound hole tone out of it, you know, rather than just the it's yeah. a bridge pickup. No, it's a neck pickup. So it's Shame, very... shameless plug. It's good. Might be interesting to know that West End Music. If you buy any pickup from us, uh, we will fit it for free. Ooh. So uh, I, that's tasty. Yum yum. That's that's something we'll do with you, sir. No, oh, that'd be lovely. That'd be so, absolutely um, lovely. But I'll have to consult with you, you, you expert people on what pickup to get. Ooh. Which which West End Music are also very we'll educated do some on. Consultating. Consultating. Yes. Yes. Thank you. They are very educated people. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not in grammar. I really uh, Zoe Gibbs of uh, Zoe Gibbs Photography. Yeah, um, she gets really annoyed when I who has you, been lovely and de- dedicated uh, uh, donated to our Kickstarter. Thank has, you, Zoe. She has indeed. She yes. Anyway, William, sorry. Um, she uh, yeah, she gets really annoyed when I say photographizing. <laughs> I would too. As a well, photographer a is, is, is photographizing <laughs> and a photographizer. Oh my goodness! Yeah. That's just. I mean, that's you're creating your own language now. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot easier that way. You don't have to learn someone else's then. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. Oh man. Oh, I tell you what though, the album artwork's gone off now. Is it? Yep. I think. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you live on air. And you, what what we what we're sending a, off. You'll just have to listen to my my reaction. Yeah, to exactly. Your, well, um, so here mm, is a screenshot of practicing. the album cover. Which Chris asked me out. Oh, wow. Have a, look, have a look. See if you can zoom in. So I'll describe it to you guys. Um, in my black Chevy uh, on the seafront, right next to Copa's, which is like Vegas looking with these sort of castle towers behind I it. I love that kind of, that way that the gradient goes. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. That is beautiful. It's all black and white. Uh, the the logo is going to be up there in the black uh, at the top. Uh, yeah, left where that where that where the stuff. But the in. interesting thing about it is the picture has been overlayed with by Christos Mialis with uh, about a thousand pictures. That's not the full. And they're all of your face. No, <laughs> they, are li- they are all of you. That and at I the can... moment, um, that is a, a draft one he sent me. But there's about a thousand pictures of the band, of our posters, of our crowds. Um, uh, just everything. As a lot of these are, or instruments. A lot of these pictures are of uh, the ones that you did. Uh, the sort of the Johnny Cash and yeah, um, yeah, because Chris took those pictures. Yeah, yeah. So he's probably got a lot more than were yeah. potentially originally released. So you exactly. got some, you got some original prints here when you buy this album, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there is, yeah, it's about a thousand pictures on there. Hopefully, I won't get nailed down for copyright. Um, but yeah, there's <laughs> the uh, that's on the front there and on the back. Um, I'll show you what the actual. This is what I've sent off to Fresh Prints uh, with Adam Merchant. <laughs> I love the fact that it's a, it's a printing company and his second name is Merchant. I think it's great. That's cool. That's, I mean, it's just, you know, you know where you got to go this, for the business. Does this, does this business print company do business cards? I believe he does. Well, there we go. We've, I believe he does. We've come full circle. <laughs> give, me, give me his number. Exactly. Because, well, um, I, I, yeah. I'm liking the type font on the logo on, on the uh, track listing. It's as literally well. called fifties movies. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's just brilliant. <laughs> right. Nice man. But yeah, there's uh, so on the back there's another picture of the van and on um, behind the C D cover there is photos uh detailing all the um uh, the processes that went into recording the album or promoting the album. And right at the bottom, because right near the end of the recording process, all right. there's a little bit of Harley playing the tambourine. Might <laughs> <laughs> you're not only on the album, you're on the album. I'm on the album. And you're, album. you're also actually um, noted here in the thank you section. Ah, because yes. Because just opposite the um, this the this where the CD will be sitting in the album, uh, there is uh, a lot of names there and all the names of the people that were from that donated to our wow. Kickstarter and campaign. How many people donated? 174 people. That's a lot of people. That's awesome. Yeah. If you are if you're one of those 174 people, yeah. Uh, just you are one in 174. You are one a heck of a person. You're one in a million 174,000. You are one in 174, which is yes, one to the I like million. those odds. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You make some big winnings. If only this was an investment opportunity for you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm one of one seventy fourth. <laughs> that's 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 good odds. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty yeah. good. No, um, awesome. But yeah, so we've just basically been um, working more on getting the album out. Just thinking, getting the ISRC codes mm. to George Perks for mastering, getting all this extra uh, detailing now, that I need. I know you posted this uh, on your Facebook. Um, you probably uh, you might be a little bit embarrassed to tell the world about this, but um, I'm going to bring it up anyway. <laughs> Go on then. 
apparently you you, you cried whilst <laughs> listening to these for the first time. <laughs> Calling me out more than once. Um, <laughs> yeah, three times. You little sissy. Hello. <laughs> uh, no, I've I've been close to tears listening to Murray's mixes when he's been uh, doing it in his room. But I was like, I can't be crying in my best mate's room. It's really weird. Oh. Um, but I was just listening to them by myself. Um, You're really invested in this, man. That's it's sick. It's mad. Because, like, you know, these songs have been with me for the past sort of two, three years, some of them anyway. And, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's different points. There's different parts of the lyrics where I'm just, like, uh, remembering times when, you know, you come into hardship and you write, write lyrics about it. Because that's a coping mechanism, right? Yeah. A copper's mechanism, sorry. <laughs> it's a coping mechanism. <laughs> it's a coping mechanism. Single P. Single P. Uh, so, yeah, like, it's it's been very cathartic to get these kind of issues out of my brain and, and, and onto a recording that sounds really pro and also is, is, is it, a collaborative effort with professionals. Is it weird to hear your voice in such a polished, mm. finished Sense. It needs a lot of polishing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Harley knows because he edits this show sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, oh, speaking so of so much polishing. Um, we uh, we like to be able to put up the show every week. Harley does most of the work for that. Um, but sometimes, uh, as you can hear, we have quite busy weeks, uh, especially with the rock hard, project. Yeah, yeah exactly. It can be hardly and the Josh show. Um, so. We are making a little bit of an appeal to see if we can find anybody that would like to help work on this show um, just to help us edit some things and get it, get more content out to everybody because mm. we are all about content, 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 but it's very difficult for us to be on yeah. time with some things sometimes. No, it's... Uh, and um, we're musicians. I mean, we're lazy as... We. No, we, I, I don't know if anybody noticed, if anyone reads the notes before notes underneath, but I haven't been able to sort of spare the time to be able to write all the things that we talk about in the show. Mm. Um, Who and which put, would? Nobody uh, would be able to get the well, time for that. <laughs> well, no, no. Um, but to put all the links to the artists, and, I, and it really annoys me because really, that's what that's what we're doing this yeah. for, um, and we haven't had a chance to do that. So if there's yeah. anybody who um, who uh, w- finds yourself with you know an extra twenty minutes a week where you'd be able and willing just to to put in a bit of work, maybe not every week, just every yeah. now and then. Um, you know a bit about logic, you know a bit about Pro Tools, you know a bit about Audacity, if, whatever. Yeah, and even if you don't, if you're able just to sort of, uh, say, do the writing for the uh, for the show notes, um, yeah. just to make make that one little job that, uh, you know, well, that's one big job if we can split it up into a few ways. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I know there's a, there's a few people on here who listen every week anyway. Yeah. You get to listen to it before everyone else. Exactly. I mean, I say before everyone else. Ah, for everyone who's listening live, <laughs> as everybody does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but I mean, uh, so as you guys will know, IO Radio is fully voluntary. Everybody that does everything yeah. here uh, is doing stuff uh, free and out of the goodness of their own heart. I don't have any goodness in my heart. I'm just doing it That's because why you Harley brought me along. Me yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, so yeah, I don't um, even have a heart. But... <laughs> if I only had a heart, yeah. me and the Josh show. So uh, we end up. <laughs> Yeah, we end up. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we all end up uh, doing a bunch of work for free. But the, the, what we what we do it for is just the community response that we're getting. All the lovely people sitting there going, oh, you know, thank you for playing my music. Thank you for coming along to the gigs. Um, you know, thank you for uh, introducing us to new bands. This isn't just us. This is the whole of IR Radio. Mm. So um, yeah, if you felt like feel like helping out a community project, please get in touch. You can find us at Harley and Josh Show at Gmail uk gmail.com dot com we are a dot com yeah, oh yes. uh, I always in, forget this we're international I've logged into it many times uh, but you can also find us at facebook.com slash Harley and Josh show uh, you can also find us on iTunes you can also find us on Podbean and most importantly you'll be able to find us on YouTube yeah <laughs> because that is easier to, easier to be everyone's, shared everyone's got a YouTube app everybody's got a YouTube app so, you yeah. a tube you were too as, as Vayner Randell will say, <laughs> who they are in Brighton at the moment. Oh, in yes, Pilo they are. in Brighton. Yeah. Um, you know, if uh, if they're listening right now, um, uh, which they probably aren't because they're off on the beach being snowed on or something. I was going to say, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be pretty chill. Mm. Um, is it, they're having a chill time. Um, but yeah, have, have fun, guys. They're doing, um, they're being sort of the house band for an open mic night tonight um, where they're getting lots of different local. Uh, hip hop artists are coming up and and sort of jamming with them, which would be pretty cool. That's awesome, right? And I've, I've we've wanted to do that here for a long time. Yeah, but we haven't had the venue response yet. 
right. it's not been a venue that's gone hmm that's a viable thing um but what do you guys think listening in uh, a live hip-hop jam where um if you're an mc uh or if you're a producer you come along uh you want to just showcase some of your new stuff mm. but you don't want to just be doing it to a recording get up there with the band and feel the vibe what do you reckon do you think we should do it and if you do think so where should we do it that's a cool that's a cool idea i like that yeah that yeah you know, you know the the musicians have got to get paid so <laughs> yeah we'll see what happens with that we'll see what happens with that I, that's cool yeah, that's cool i like that. what we got uh right let's talk about what's going on this week shall we we Go did on. promise people that we were going to tell them that there is some music coming up so there is some music coming up so uh this friday we have two sick monkeys casual nausea and at a cop band from bristol i've been listening to casual nausea today uh which is zoe and sean's band yeah um they they also do the uncomfortable beach party promotions here at the smokehouse Wonderful. always go down well um, so that'll be an Uncomfortable Beach Party production. That is this Friday from 8 o'clock. If you like your punk, you like your hardcore, you like music with a little bit of grit and dirt to it, you'll love it tonight. Uh, that, and it'll be a nice sweaty show, I'll tell you that. Good, <laughs> It'll good. be a sweet a sweet gig. So that's this Sword Friday here at the sweat. Smokehouse. Um, a band that I'd like to play us out on today, uh, I'll talk about them in a bit. Um, we also have uh, Fatal Crowbar Injury Plus, a beautiful band that we have played just today on the show, Strike the Sun this Saturday, 7.30 at the Smokehouse. So you have two great gigs coming on the Smokehouse this week. Uh, you've got Two Sick Monkeys, Casual Laws at Atticop, Fatal Crowbar Injury, and Strike the Sun here this Saturday. So check that out. If you like that track, Ghosts, we played earlier, check it out live. Um, good friends of mine. Uh, anybody here... Good who is, Yeah, good friends of mine. <laughs> um, if anybody here is a big fan of Rockabilly, me, um, you'll want to... Are, are you? Yeah. Oh wow! I, nobody, nobody would have guessed that JS and the Lockerbilly's frontman Josh Locke is a fan of Rockabilly. <laughs> Josh Lockerbilly. Uh, oh my goodness! How many people oh, have asked damn. if your name, last name is actually Lockerbilly? Uh, no, everybody just always wonders what the JS stands for. And what does it stand for? Josh Sam. My middle name is Samuel. That's really disappointing. Really boring, right? <laughs> I was like, some, it somebody put like... it as job search in the Lockerbilly the other day. I thought, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. I'm a musician, so yeah, it was a job oh, search. That's... Oh. <laughs> it was a, it was a typo. They just put JS and it to put in job search. I was like, that's nah, bang on. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn Beal, for that one. Thank you, Lynn. Um, oh. Right, anyway. So uh, this Saturday at nine, the Earl Kitchener in Ipswich are uh, hosting the fantabulous Ed Gasket and the Rockers. Nice. If you like your Charlie Feathers, you like your Johnny Burnett. If you like your uh, Carl Perkins, you like your Rockabilly, nice and raw, uh, get down to the Old Kitchener here Saturday at 9 o'clock. We have another fantastic band playing covers. Uh, that is, I think, it might be my favourite full covers band from around here. Okay. Albion Mills. Oh, yeah. Albion Mills uh, are at the Wild Man this Friday at 9 uh, you know, I don't say that lightly. There are a lot of fantastic covers bands, Harley included in some of them, but it's just the fact of they can get that 60s psychedelic sound so bang on without even having any keyboards. Uh, yeah. It's just, if you really want to hear like record perfect tracks from The Doors or Pink Floyd, mm. get down to The Wild Man this Friday at nine o'clock to see Albion Mills. Uh, Cult Cafe this Wednesday are carrying on the ICR tradition, monthly tradition, uh, where they are on? launching a new album. Uh, um, uh, as they did with Team Ainsley's Vibes yep. last month, which I went down to, which was a fantastic event. Um, End Notes, another local band, uh, are launching an album this Wednesday or live on ICR. That's at 7.30 at Cult Cafe Bar. I might see if I can get down to that after the Rock Project. No. Nice. Might be a bit of fun. No idea. Uh, I've not actually listened to their notes. I've not heard of them before. No. But, you know, if ICR are plugging it, then we should do it. <laughs> we'll try and get some of them playing some of their music next week. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. Um, we also have uh, a Gypsy Jazz Collective coming along uh, to Ipswich. Uh, Andy Lawrenson Trio this Friday, 7.45 at St. Peter's by the Waterfront in Ipswich. Yeah. Which I think that'll work quite nicely, um, having some gypsy jazz in, in that, little, that little venue. Yeah. I say little, it's huge. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that'll work really nicely because when when Sophie Tallulah Good Times topped, played for New Year's with us, yep. uh, she had 
uh, a fantastic guitarist, which I cannot remember his name. Oh, no, that's really sucky. But anyway, <laughs> they played some really nice electro swing but mixed in with gypsy jazz and it worked really well with the venue. So, you know, that proves that it works. Yeah. So that's the Andy Lawrence and Trio this Friday, 7.45 at St. Peter's by the Waterfront. If you like your music a little bit more chilled and you don't want two six monkeys, casual nausea and out of carp, get, get, uh, yeah, get some gypsy jazz instead. <sighs> And uh, <laughs> what about you, my friend? Have you got some gigs this coming up this weekend? Yes, I've got a gig this Saturday, which is with Space Rocks. Um, we. Myself, Toby Houghton on drums, Spencer Houghton on guitar. Uh, we're going to be playing at the Dolphin in Felixstowe. All oh, right. Yeah. So um, that's, uh, that's, I think that's all I've got this weekend. I feel like there's something Ooh. happening on Friday. I just don't know what. Friday day. Friday day, yeah. What's going on Friday day? I don't know. Uh, no. I know Thursday is St. David's Day. Oh, it's St. David's Day. St. David Brown's Day. Ooh. Hashtag Rog Project, hashtag public holiday. I don't know what day it is. Okay, no, second of February, nothing. Second of March. No, I'm no, I've got a really quiet week. It's fine. Oh nice, mate. Um, Liking that. Yeah, so I've got I've got a show second of March as well. Okay. I am up in uh, Elmswell at the Railway Tavern uh, right. with the duo so it's going to be me and Rich I'll be playing double bass uh, yep. that's our first time at this place so it's going to be quite fun to see uh, what the what the crazy locals are like yep. you know, if they're as crazy as they are around here we'll have a good time yeah no it I should be a good so. one nice but yeah so that's 2nd of March up in Elmswell at the Railway Tavern um, yeah I've only got one more show to plug here which I would like to play you guys out with once we finish the show uh, that's uh uh, the Flight Brigade at the Cult Cafe mm. this Friday at 9 uh, Cult Cafe and Bar in Ipswich uh, they I don't know they've got this Coco and the Butterfields kind of vibe okay yeah which we you know which we are fans of on the show we are indeed um, but there's a little bit more of a poppy indie rock vibe going on so uh, I think I myself think that Flight Brigade should have a gig with um mm-hmm. With with Coco and the Butterfields, sweet. Isn't it oh, works. They've cool. got this sort of duo thing going on, um, but it's kind of you know it's a proper band effort. There's yeah. like I can't think. There's like seven people in the band or something. Um, so yeah, there was uh, there's seven people on stage at the Cult Cafe. Will be quite incredible, won't it? <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that'll be quite an incredible Lovely thing room to like see. that as well. What's that? Yeah, that yeah. room sounds surprisingly nice, considering most of its walls are glass. Yeah, exactly. And the rest are concrete. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, so weird. It, well, it, actually, funny story is that Rich uh, Webb and James Hicks of JS and the Lockerbillies recorded drums in there. Oh yeah. For busking for Bref- breakfast album. Right. Yeah. Uh, with Mitch Pearson, and, uh, and they were just saying that just how fun it was because just the room reflections quite hard to control, but if you get them right, yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Would you record in there? Um, I'd love to give it a go just to see what happens. Yeah. It's one of those things, if you want a particular sound, you probably wouldn't want to record in there. But if you're going into a session like that and you go, let's see what this room allows us to do. Right. And we'll work around what we can make it do. Mm. You know, uh, often when I'm working with, um, I will mic up a drum kit to make it sound in a particular way. Um, you can make it sound high energy, low energy. You can make it sound very close and very compressed or very open. Mm. And each sound lends itself to its own space. Ca- it, it's, and it lends itself to its own genre and mix. Genre. Oh, okay, I get you. Um, mm. And um, sometimes, like, there'll be certain recordings that sound great. Uh, like, you know, if you're using sort of the Glyn John style, you, as long as you've got a good room, that's a great sound recording. Mm, yeah. I tried that once for a pop punk song and it sounded terrible. Yeah, true. Because there's, it, there's, the drum kit sounds too big. Mm. Uh, it's also down to wide. how you mic it up as well. Because what yeah. I've been loving with the uh, with the Lockerbillies album, Murray's been mixing it, but we recorded the drums with James in Canterbury. Uh, as I was saying before, 15 channels that we used on there. Yeah. Uh, so we had... Close kick, far away kick, blah, blah, blah. There was just so many options for Murray to use whilst mixing the track. You'll listen through to the album and you'll, you'll, it will sound like the drums were recorded in different room at points. Yeah. Um, because different songs just need different parts of the drum kit yeah. to be amplified. Um, and it's really, it's just quite incredible for me as an experience because it's been a learning experience for me as well as everybody else that's been in part of the band. Um, just to sort of see just how much mic placement does affect something. Oh, it's, it's so important. And um, I think that's where a lot of, 
I don't want to say a lot of people go wrong, but it, it's a, a lot of the thing that people learn very quickly and the hard way that you can't, you know, just putting a mic in front of a guitar amp yeah. isn't, you know, you've got to find the right place for the right guitar, for the right mic as well. Yeah. Um, you you can't put a dynamic right mic right in the middle of the cone of a speaker because it will be fizzy and it will sound horrible. That's how I usually do it. I see. Or oh, the fifty. I put fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Usually off right, center. right, direct into it, and it gets nice bitey sound for me. See, I find I'd maybe you... tug, put it slightly off kilter so that it's going across the mic. Yeah. But I kind of prefer that bitey sound because I know it cuts through them, mm. especially with a three-piece. Yeah. Because like if you've got those bass um, frequencies filled in mm. by by the bass player like yourself, and you know got got the really sizzly bits from the cymbals. Yeah. When you've got their overheads. Uh, I like to f- I like to really fill that mid range on the guitar. I, I find the mid range comes from the side of the cone. The mm. center of the cone, you're going to be pushing five to eight k, mm. and that's the, the the harsh bit that can be a bit too much. Mm. So I on like a dynamic mic, I like to push those sort of those mid frequencies with that kind of seven hundred hertz kind of that wide uh, guitarry gnarly sound comes from G- gnarly, but. If you want to put a ribbon mic, put that right in the middle because ribbon mics are very a dark. A ribbon mic. A ribbon mic. Ribbon mics are nice and dark. Put it right in the middle and it will give you the transient and you'll get the best clean sound you could ever want with that. Sweet. Uh, okay, and, well, I'm um, going to have to try that. Murray is very much with you uh, mm. and likes to have the, the off, off-centre yeah. miking. Um, I'm just... Yeah, I just like to punish people a bit more, I guess. <laughs> I yeah. I find if you put dynamic mic in the middle, it hurts your ears. Yeah, uh, yeah too harsh but if you're a little sensitive little snowflake little <laughs> th- 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 um, <laughs> we're coming up to that <laughs> no, that just got me <laughs> <laughs> good good um yeah uh just quickly i want to make uh a little a point of making people save the date uh 30th of march which is good friday it's the end of this month uh, well, the month coming. Um, we are filming a music video at The Rep in Aye. Ipswich. Nice. Three till five. Um, and we want as many people to come along as possible. It's all in aid of Age UK Suffolk, uh, just to help with their war on loneliness this year. Um, I've I've just been keeping up to date with uh, with a lot of sort of statistics. And there's about was one in 10 people over 65 in Suffolk are feeling lonely. Uh, nowadays uh, that's 15,000 people just in Suffolk across the UK that's one in 10 uh, that's that's in the millions that's in the millions of people yeah. that are feeling more and more lonely as we go along uh, and we just wanted to put some kind of video that we can just spread around there with old-fashioned rock and roll and people over 65 from either nursing homes or just who live on their own uh, and need friends uh, to come out join some of us younger people and just notice that us younger people people feel alone as well. We need a bit of we need a bit of love. So uh, if you feel like coming out and supporting a good cause, uh, it's all you know. We'll be taking donations on the door for Age UK. That's three till five. Good Friday. Be good to yourself, Friday. Um, three till five at the Rep and Ipswich. I'll be putting more details on that on thelockerbleeds.com. I'll be playing, saying some more stuff about it on Harley and the Josh show. But if you just want to help your community, please keep involved and keep your ears peeled. Eh? Uh, you got anything more you want to plug? Nothing week, more Harley. I want to plug. No, I um, no. Let's uh, let's let's. Should we listen wrap to some new up. music, shall we? Yes. Well, well, we've already told people where they can find us. Let's do it one more time. So, if you, I'm not subscribed. If you're listening on iTunes, if you download our iTunes, hit that subscribe button right now. Oh, if yeah. you're listening, if you're watching our video on Bling. YouTube, uh, hit that subscribe button right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a theme here. Can you work yeah, yeah, it out? Yeah, yeah. Maybe like it, share it. If you haven't found it, us via, twist it. if you haven't found us via Facebook, Pull find it. us on Facebook. Like that button. Hit yeah. that like button. Just like the button. Don't like us. Just, just, yeah, just like. Oh, I love that thumb. I love that oh, thumb. Cool. We're running out of time. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for listening. I love you too, Harley. You're wonderful. Oh, thanks. Ah, shut up. Bye. Bye.